The problem with liquid culture is you never really know if it's clean unless you start it from agar. Today I'll show you how to turn a verified clean agar plate into liquid culture you can actually trust. In addition, I'll show you the number one mistake that ruins liquid culture jars even when you think you've done everything right. Making liquid culture from agar is the cleanest, most reliable method. It cuts contamination risk way down and allows you to choose the healthiest, most aggressive mycelium right off the plate. By the end of this video, you're going to feel supremely confident in your ability to inoculate agar, prepare your liquid culture jars, and transfer that inoculated agar over to said jars, thus creating your own abundance of liquid culture to grow all the mushrooms your heart desires. So first up, we're gonna need some agar. If you don't know what it is, think back to your high school science class. It's basically what's in those Petri dishes you would play around with. These plates have nutrients that feed our mycelium and the best part is we can see exactly what's going on. If there's contamination, it'll be easy to spot on that plate. It'll look black or blue, green, red, anything but nice white mycelium. Now you can buy your own pre-poured agar plates, but they do cost a couple bucks. For the sake of this DIY mushroom growing channel, I recommend pouring your own. Now for this video, I inoculated my agar with Cordyceps militaris. Cordyceps militaris is great for increasing energy and is a popular mushroom supplement amongst athletes. So to create this beautiful agar you see before you, I took a liquid culture syringe from happymycelium.com and I injected half a milliliter right onto the plate. Aggressive mycelium can colonize an agar plate pretty quickly and mine have done just that. Now, before we transfer anything, we need to prepare our liquid culture base. To make the base, I measure out 500 milliliters of distilled water in a mason jar and then I warm it up a bit. After the water's warm, I add 10 grams of light malt extract powder and give it a little stir to dissolve. I like to use little magnetic stirrers in my liquid culture, but if you just want to swirl it by hand, that's okay too. For the lids, we want to use one breathable filter port and we want to use one injection port. They're super easy to DIY. You can just hole punch a couple holes in the lid and cover one with micro pore tape or polyfill and the other with some high temperature silicone. Easy peasy. Next, we're gonna cover the lid of our mason jars with foil and pressure cook them at 15 PSI for 20 to 25 minutes. We don't wanna overdo it here as pressure cooking these jars too long can caramelize the sugar in that light malt extract. And when that sugar becomes caramelized, the mycelium won't grow quite as well and it's gonna be harder to detect any possible contamination. After your 20 minutes are up, just let the jar cool naturally inside the pressure cooker. This is the part of the process that has a tendency to go wrong for a lot of people. Pulling your jar out of the pressure cooker too early while it's still really warm can create what's called suckback contamination. What happens is that temperature differential between the outside air and the jar causes the water inside to almost contract and it pulls air inside the jar. And when air is being pulled aggressively inside the jar, your filter may not be able to keep all the contaminants out and any little contaminants that make it inside this jar full of what's effectively sugar water are gonna really be trouble for your mycelium. This is where so many people mess up. You really just have to be patient. Now, once our jars are cooled, they're all ready to inoculate. So I'll bring everything that I need inside of my still air box and spray it all down with 70% isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to loosen the lid on my jar, but leave it closed for now. Then I carefully open my agar plate and with a sterile scalpel, I'm gonna cut out what looks like the strongest mycelium. If the whole plate wasn't already colonized, I would generally cut from the edge of the mycelium as that's where the most aggressive and healthy mycelium will be. But in this case, the whole plate is colonized, so I'm just gonna pick a spot that looks healthy and cut it out. Now I'll lift the lid on my jar just enough to get my scalpel and agar inside, scrape it off, and close the lid back up. That's it. I'll give the jar a little swirl to spread the nutrients and the mycelium around, and now we wait. 
After a few days, you'll probably see a little blob sitting in the bottom of the jar, and that's exactly what we want. That's the mycelium starting to take off. I like to throw my jar on top of the magnetic stirrer every day or two just to break things apart, but once again, you can just swirl by hand. After a week or two, your jar is gonna be nice and cloudy with mycelium. Growth usually slows down at this point, which is your indicator that it's ready. From here, I like to store my jar inside the fridge to help extend its shelf life. I'll store a batch for upwards of a few months. You can store them longer, but just know that the mycelium will weaken over time. And while it may be a little bit more time consuming, this is the cleanest way to make your liquid culture. Now, if you want a little bit of a faster way, you can turn one liquid culture syringe into hundreds of syringes, and I show you how to do it in this video right over here. And for those who want to learn how to make their own agar plates for pennies on the dollar, be sure to check out this video over here. Happy growing.